So my name is Jose Luis Mijan. I was born in Argentina, in the city of Mar del Plata. I studied in Buenos Aires uh, clinical chemistry and biochemistry. In 1977, I went to the United States on a Rotary International Fellowship to do research. And uh, I, I went there for nine months, and here I am 30 years later. And uh, I have become professor of um, uh, uh, chemistry, uh, professor of genetics at the Burnham Institute. I also kept uh, held the post of um, professor of uh, genetics at the University of Umeå in Sweden. So for five years I was commuting between La Jolla uh, and Umeå, Sweden. But now I'm full time in La Jolla. Thank you. Um, we will ask you what could be the consequences of your very nice uh, recent uh, research. The focus of our work is in trying to understand uh, what regulates bone mineralization. What are the molecules and the mechanisms that initiate calcification in the normal state? And what can go array, what can go wrong in the regulation of these mechanisms so that you develop pathologies? One of the pathologies is hypophosphatasia, meaning uh, insufficient mineralization in the form of rickets, in the form of osteomalacia. Another side of the story is that you could have hypermineralization. You could have problems of osteoarthritis, uh, you can have problems of vascular calcification, meaning ectopic calcification. So you have to start by understanding the control of the normal mechanisms to, be, to then understand what is going wrong in these pathologies and try to revert them back to, uh, to the right uh, situation. So now that we begin to have an understanding of the molecules uh, at play, we can hope to be able to modify the pathway so as to bring it back into normality. So it's not only hypophosphate, as a, uh, which can be touched by your research? No, in fact, uh, we are working with three or four diseases that could be affected by the work we're doing. Uh, we understand uh, that uh, alkaline phosphatase has a very s important function in regulating the concentration of inorganic paraphosphate, which is a very important inhibitor of calcification. Now, we have also learned that paraphosphate has an effect on the cells that produce bone, the osteoblast, in producing osteopontin, which is another inhibitor of calcification. Um, the enzyme that produces paraphosphate is called NPP1, and deficiencies in this enzyme co cause certain form of osteoarthritis. Um, upregulation of NPP1 causes additional problems like chondrocalcinosis, for example, deposition of calcium paraphosphate dihydrate in the joints. We also study ankylosis uh, spondylitis. This gene is, is, is involved in transporting paraphosphate from inside the cell to the outside of the cell. And these are also mice that mimic uh, ossification of the spine, osteoarthritis, and so forth. Additionally, both of these molecules are, uh, the, the absence of these molecules, NPP1 or ANC, are models of medial calcification, arterial calcification. And that bring us, brings us very close to very important diseases like um, vascular calcification as a consequence of aging, of uh, obesity, of diabetes, of uh, uh, end-stage renal disease. So understanding, uh, understanding this pathway we allow, uh, will allow us not only to at attempt to prevent and treat hypophosphatasia, but perhaps affect the evolution of osteoarthritis, vascular calcification, uh, ankylosis, and so forth. So it's a very central mechanism. Mm -hmm. So my last question will be about uh, what uh, you were expected uh, about this symposium. Exactly what is happening. Bringing 70 researchers to discuss their latest findings, to pose the questions that are exciting them as being important, and to bring their answers. How do they see uh, the evolution of the field? What answers are they finding in their own research and sharing it with the colleagues? So I think the symposium is going just the way I wanted it to go. Thank you. Thank you.